this is a TP-Link TLSG10166 16-port gigabit Ethernet switch, which I, of course, picked out of the trash a couple of days ago. I do not know where this thing came from, I do not know why it was discarded, but I figured we'd uh, take it apart and uh, have a look inside. It seems to be relatively recent, actually. Uh, oh, well, it comes apart like all other. Rack paint gear, couple of screws, metal case. We need to bore you with that. Alright, all the screws are out, so let's see what we've got. Oh, this certainly, wow, that's a proper big heatsink. This must be related to my current 8 pot switch because that also has a giant heatsink. No fan. Passively cooled, so it might not use that much power. It doesn't seem to have any obviously bad caps in it, so I might be that this thing won't be coming back to life. Mains fuse is okay. I haven't tried this thing, I actually don't know if it works. We've got a cap on there. No more cap on there. It seems to be 100% Capcom in the power supply. Probably runs in a single 12 volt rail or something. What do we have there? Uh, 12 volts, 2 amps. Do we have a brand in this? Ching Jong. It's a Chinese generic power supply. Samson on the main board though, so that's a pretty nice price. Hmm. Really nothing obviously wrong with this thing, so let's just uh, pair it on and see what it does. Alright. Explosion hazard. Drawing a what? Seems to be entirely dead. Yeah, not a noise out of a power supply, so perhaps we do have a dead power supply. Yep, there's not a millivolt coming out of that, so... Now the question is, is it going to spring to life if we just pop this out without sticking our fingers in the mains? Still dead. Yep, still dead. So, seems we've just got a dead power supply of this thing. Well, that's nice news. This thing's generic enough to be very easily replaceable. Let's say just to power this device out of the LED power supply and see if the actual switchboard springs to life. Alright, I've gone with the wild assumption that uh, red is going to be positive and black is going to be negative, so let's uh, see what it does. Yeah, drunk some power, we've got an LED now, so I'd wager that board's okay. Yep, stuck some networking into it and uh, it seems to be working. A-okay, yep. Copying at proper gigabit speeds for a hundred and something megabytes per second. So, we've certainly got a working switchboard and a bad power supply, so let's just uh, pop it and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. Okay, I just had a quick poke about this thing and it uh, seems to have two very obvious issues. Uh, the first I found was that uh, this little cap here, the one by the heatsink, a uh, 4 to 7 microfarad 50 volt seems to be entirely open circuit, but uh, more surprisingly, the uh, primary cap V47400 uh, also seems to be entirely open circuit according to my meter. So I'm going to have to desolder those and uh, double check this one. It's very rare for the primary caps to go bad, especially when they are properly 400 volt rated. But uh, this one's certainly going to be an issue. Alright, I replaced the two bad caps, which are indeed obviously bad. I don't have any really suitable 47 microfarad 400 volt caps, so I just uh, snagged one out of a, an old laptop power supply, and it's a wee bit tall. It uh, might require a few rounds of tape around the top in order to not be entirely unsafe once the case is on, but it'll do you for testing purposes. Now, when these uh, primary caps go bad, things tend to get ugly, so I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, thing is toast. But I will give it a go, I'll just uh, 
put it back there. And we'll see. Okay, moment of truth. This is going to go bang or this is going to go poof. Well, neither. There we go. Let's hook that back to the switch. We've still got power there. And we've got a power LED. So, I'd wager this thing's going to work perfectly now under its own power. Yeah, it seems to be talking. Are we going to be able to? I don't care about rebooting. Can we? Yes, we can. So there you go. That's a very quick and dirty TP-Link TLSG1016 repair. And what we we'll need to do is make sure that cap in there doesn't cause a fire or life hazard. But uh, a few proper rounds of tape is going to take care of that. And if you're curious, the power consumption of this thing seems to be just about 7 or 8 watts uh, with the internal power supply uh, while it's transferring files. With the lab PSU it's measured about 300 milliamps, so this internal power supply isn't particularly efficient since the 300 milliamps at uh, 12 volts is about 3.6 watts. But eh, you can't have everything, it probably gets a bit more efficient on the higher load when you actually put some more stuff into the, all of them holes right there. And yes, I did replace all the caps. I wouldn't leave it half-assed like that. It's even got the protective plastic still on the front. Oh yeah. Oh no. That's a good feeling. Cheerio.